let's talk about what all these different terms mean that you might be seen thrown around on uh, you know Instagram or Reddit. I'm talking about terms like Palmer Method, Business Penmanship, Spencerian, American Cursive, Ornamental Penmanship. What do all these terms mean? Um, I'm not so concerned about people misusing the terms, but rather... You know, people are always going to misuse terms, but I'm more I'm more putting this out there for people that want to know what these terms mean and they want to use these terms accurately, and for people that want to understand the evolution of American penmanship a little bit. Um, what I can what I can explain about it, what I understand about it, it is an interesting story. And by talking about what these terms mean, we we have to talk about the evolution of American penmanship. So whenever you talk start talking about um, the evolution of American penmanship, we have to start with Spencerian. And, you know, Spencerian really is just a brand name for a type of script. And you're looking at spent some Spencerian right here on the screen. Um, this is published in the New Standard of Practical Penmanship, which was published in 1885 by the Spencerian Brothers Company. Uh, or Spencerian authors, I don't know what company it was, but Spencer, Spencer's company put this out um, in 1885, and you see it's called practical penmanship. Okay, so that really that is really the word that that's what Spencer was creating with his with his books. He was teaching practical penmanship. He was teaching a brand of practical penmanship, which he called Spencerian. And that term became popularized because his books were very popular. And, you know, they were so popular that today in modern times, we call this type of writing Spencerian. Now this, what you're looking at here is maybe on the more practical side of Spencerian, um, as opposed to the more artistic or decorative side of Spencerian. Um, as you can see here, you know, the, the capital letters are very basic. There's not a lot of loops and things like that. There was more decorative hands um, or styles of Spencerian that were taught as well. Um, but the word practical penmanship is important because it really describes this type of writing that was being taught in the sense that it was for practical purposes. This was a hand that they taught to students. You know, they taught them to be used in school and to be used in business, personal correspondence, everyday use. Um, students were taught this type of hand, okay? So it was practical as opposed to decorative or artistic. And like I said, they did teach more artistic styles, um, but I'm not looking at one here. We'll, we'll talk about how this kind of ev evolved into ornamental penmanship in a second. Um, but really what happened over time, as far as I can tell, is that this Spencerian hand, which again is just a brand name, there was also authors like Dunton who created like a Duntonian hand. Um, this hand just became more and more practical. And the way they made Spencerian more and more practical over time was they, you know, started reducing the shades, making the shades very thin or removing the shades completely, and then simplifying the capital letters and removing, um, you know, all kinds of extraneous strokes in the script. All right. And I don't have a lot of intermediate intermediaries here, but we did see an evolution from this type of Spencerian practical penmanship of like, let's say the 1860s to 1880s into what we would think of or call today business penmanship. And here we see an example of business penmanship. And this is a particular brand name of business penmanship, which is called Palmer Method, which is very popular even today. A lot of people know what Palmer Method is. Um, and a lot of people are out there looking for Palmer Method stuff. Um, but Palmer Method isn't the only type of script that you see here, um, there is an umbrella term called business penmanship that encap encapsulates all of the different methods, you could say, of business penmanship that were taught in the you know 1880s through into the 1900s, okay? So there was Palmer method, um, we have Bailey method here, you can see it's, if I switch back to Palmer, very similar style of writing. With the Bailey, the Bailey is a little more polished, I would say, a little more well executed. He was a really amazing business penman. Um, you also have like the Mills style here. So Mills business penmanship was a popular book that a lot of people study today, and it had its own look, a little more formal look to it. 
Um, and this is really one of the gold standards of business penmanship, everything you're seeing on the page here. So that's really what I want to impart to you is that Palmer Method's a brand name, just like Spencer, Spencerian, and business penmanship is really the more appropriate term when talking about this style of writing. And you'll notice when I talk about the evolution between Spencerian, Spencerian practical penmanship here, you can see all of the shading has been eliminated in the Palmer style or the business penmanship style. Um, you know, and some forms have been simplified. A coarser pen is being used here, so you have a thicker line on the page, which makes it easier to read. Um, this script was just easier, you know, it, you see this evolution, and I can only speculate on what drove the evolution, but I'm pretty sure it had a lot to do with just things moving faster in the world, and the business world, and Americans, they wanted a script that they could, that was easier to teach and learn for students and then it was easier to you know faster to write and read and something like this that doesn't have any shades in it doesn't really have any extra loops or anything like that um, is a lot easier to read than something like Spencerian which very fine lines and shading that can be distracting which I think a lot of people would think this looks more quote-unquote beautiful or graceful but it's definitely not as practical as Palmer Method or the Mills uh, business penmanship. So basically what we're seeing here is an evolution of practicality, increasing practicality in the scripts that were being taught in America. Um, I should also note that the Spencerian script, if I go back to that, was taught with arm movement and finger movement. So we call that combined movement, um, but it, arm movement was a big part of the script. If you were really executing it in a textbook fashion, with the Palmer method, you know, Palmer was a big proponent of pure arm movement, so really no finger or combined movement in the writing. You know, all of the writing was done with the arm. But other authors like Zayner, for example, was a huge proponent of using combined movement when writing, you know, business penmanship, or he called it practical penmanship, or practical writing even. Um, so it really depended. Each method has its own, you know, style of teaching and different opinions about the execution, but all of these scripts were primarily driven through arm movement. Even if they advocated finger movement, the arm was the primary mover of the pen, um, as opposed to all handwriting that's taught today, with very few exceptions. Um, nobody's teaching anybody to use their arm to write anymore, because um, we just don't need it. You know, people were writing People had jobs back then that were they were writing hours a day, and they needed to write with their arms so that they could, you know, physically do it without pain and fatigue. Today, that's not the case. Uh, it's, today, it's really more about learning the forms, learning to write, kind of as a way to help you read, in a sense. And we don't need to spend the time teaching people to learn to write with their arm. It's a lot harder to do that. Um, all right, so. That's the evolution from Spencerian to business penmanship or Palmer method. We can also see a further evolution, really a branching. So Spencerian kind of split into two uh, traditional American scripts. So it split into the more practical direction, it split into business penmanship, and then it split artistically into ornamental penmanship. So you think of it like a branching situation and here we're looking at ornamental penmanship and you can see this is much more artistic than the practical Spencerian penmanship Spencerian penmanship here and it's obviously much more artistic than like the Bailey penmanship the Bailey business penmanship here um, back to the ornamental you know it's it really took the Spencerian even the more decorative Spencerian stuff it took that to the next level by really decreasing or as you say, increasing the slant of the writing. So going from like a 52 degree slant to like a 50 or 45 degree slant. So this writing is more slanted than the Spencerian practical penmanship here. Um, it's also has a much thicker shades and that's because this writing was done with a oblique pen. And uh, if you know anything about an oblique, oblique, plan, ob oblique pen, you can create much thicker shades um, 
with an oblique pen than you can a straight holder pen. And that's because, you know, the Spencerian, even the artistic Spencerian of the time was done with a straight holder because that's all there really was at the time. And the oblique pen holder didn't really become popular until I think like the 1870s and 80s. And so that's that's what was being used here to do this type of writing. So you get those really thick dynamic shades in this writing. You have all types of cool flourishes. And I think the primary purpose for this type of writing was decorative artistic. So it was done in what you're seeing here. You know, this is a poem or a song, Oh Beautiful. Um, and you can see that, you know, penman or a, you know, a drawing was incorporated into the design. And that's the type of stuff you see with the ornamental penmanship. So when you hear ornamental penmanship, or this could also be called artistic writing, um, this is what this is what people are talking about when they say that. So those are all the terms that really encapsulate traditional American penmanship. From a modern perspective, you see people say things like Spencerian. They're probably just talking about the script itself, um, something like what you're seeing here, but they're not talking about the execution. They're not talking about using their arm to write with it, to write it. They're just talking about the forms and they're probably not using their arm to write it, which is fine. Um, but it's going to look a little different when you use your fingers to write a script like this. It's not going to have that the same exact look. Um, and then people say, you know, some people are saying they're, you know, trying to learn Spencerian handwriting. And in that case, they're using, you know, maybe a fountain pen or a ballpoint pen. And they're just trying to execute writing that looks like this, but it doesn't have any shades because they're not using a pen that can make um, thick and thin lines like this. Um, and you also hear terms like American cursive, which I think is a good term, you know, just kind of describing business penmanship. Um, I kind of see those as interchangeable terms. But, uh, you know, there's been a book published by Michael Soule, you know, Master Penman, that is called American uh, cursive. So he's kind of, uh, I would say popularized that term to a certain degree. And some people might think you're talking about the specific style of writing that he teaches in that book, American cursive. Uh, and then there's also obviously the term cursive, which is a super general term that you could describe all of these scripts as because cursive really just means connected writing. Um, but when I think of cursive, I think a lot of people think of cursive, they think of the more modern, evolution of cursive of practical penmanship you could say that's being taught or was being taught you know within the last 50 or 60 years in america or even elsewhere in the world um and that's definitely a different look than what you see here looking at the bailey uh business penmanship here you know modern cursive typically looks much different than this um you know in my course consi consistent cursive i teach something that's really as close as possible to these traditional business penmanship scripts without using any arm movement. Um, and the American cursive that, that Michael Soul teaches is, is very close to the traditional business penmanship as well with no arm movement. All right, I think that covers everything. I'm gonna leave it at that. Like, it's a, it's a, it is a tangled web. I hope this clears some things up. I hope you understand this whole evolution of practical American penmanship you know, what Spencerian kind of became, you know, where it came from and uh, how it kind of split into business penmanship and ornamental penmanship. Fun stuff, whatever you do, don't call any of these things fonts. See that online. I don't really care. It's not a big deal to me, but somebody might might leave a comment on your on your post or whatever if you say the word font. These aren't fonts. These are scripts. Fonts are produced by, you know, printers and computers and things like that. Um, scripts are handwritten. So the rest of it, as long as you, as long as you stick to that, the rest you can, you can, uh, the rest of it, you'll figure out in your own time, but just don't use the word font.